Greetings, I, the War Al, greets you. I go away for a few days for my annual Easter vacation, and I come back to pure, unbridled panic in the Counter-Strike community, and I'm loving it. All due to a single patch note. CSGO items received in trade cannot be retraded for a period of seven days. I can remember things, by the way. Sure, inconvenience for the avid trader, but why did Valve make this change now? And why are so many people calling this the death of Counter-Strike? Oh, it's still me? We don't have a voiceover section or even a comfortable chair? All right. I'll wing it. We don't need to go over line by line in the patch notes. It's the first thing you see when you launch the game. It's right in the center of your screen. You can't miss it. Let's just go over the greatest hits. Recently, we've been looking into ways to reduce some negative unintended uses of trading in CSGO, such as fraud and scams. Now, it's very interesting that Valve would use fraud and scams as a justification for the trade ban. We're sort of dancing around the real issue here, aren't we? Gambling. Oops, did I say the G word? Now, because of the ability to take a Steam item and to turn it into cold hard cash, a lot of nefarious organizations have popped up to exploit this, specifically gambling organizations, because it's unregulated, there's a very vulnerable user base, it's ripe for the picking. And a lot of people are arguing that taking away all of that stuff, taking away skin trading, the ability to make money off of it, and the gambling organizations and the betting and stuff would destroy Counter-Strike and would destroy the esports scene. I would argue that Counter-Strike is the game. Counter-Strike is not the monetization strategy that Valve has created around it. If you take away those elements and Counter-Strike dies, then Counter-Strike didn't deserve any of that in the first place. It's not a good enough game to stand on its own. That's my argument to it. Now, there's a very big difference between an arcade token and a poker chip. With an arcade token, you take your money, you turn it into a token, and then you use that token, like Chuck E. Cheese token, to play games and have fun. You don't expect anything out of it. At the best, you'll get an overpriced plushie or some tickets to get plastic crap that'll end up in a landfill. The poker chip, on the other hand, you take your money, you turn it into the poker chip, you use it for fun and games, and then you cash out. You turn the poker chip back into money. For Steam's system to work, it needs to be more like the token. It can't be like the poker chip because it opens themselves up to all kinds of legal problems. You, you have unregulated underage gambling going on using their system. That eventually it could bite them in the ass. So what's gambling, and why do we have this big subculture of gambling and Counter-Strike in particular? The thrill of gambling doesn't come from winning or losing money. It actually comes from the anticipation of a payout, which stimulates the reward center of the brain. You can see this very clearly in how casinos and case openings, for example, try to stimulate you as much as possible during the anticipation phase. You have bright flashing lights and colors and sounds. Ding, 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 ding. Why in Counter-Strike is this happening? Well, first, you have the ability to take a Steam item and turn it into money. So you can create this system that's completely unregulated. It's sort of in the shadows. Also, you have this audience that you can reach, these people who play the game. These people who are already sort of in the system because they already have skins. They already have the skins in their inventory. They don't have to buy in. They already have it there. And also, you have a huge reach through people like YouTubers. People who advertise these things. And many of the YouTubers even own the gambling sites. That's happened a few times. Over time, third parties have developed services that use automated Steam accounts to mimic players and make use of Steam's trading functionality. Unfortunately, some of these third-party services have become a vector for fraud or scams. Unlike players, these services rely on the ability to trade each item very frequently. In contrast, a given item moves between actual players no more than once a week in the vast majority of cases. I'm not clickbaiting you, by the way. We're building up to it. The imminent death of gambling, or whatever the heck I'm gonna call this video. Valve, once again here, is using statistical analysis to aid in their patch notes. So they must have looked at 
the trades that happened and noticed that in the vast majority of cases, once an item is traded, it's not traded again for at least a week. What they're ignoring here is the small amount of people who participate in the trading community and who trade in high frequency. This is gonna greatly, greatly hurt them and all of that community. And there's legitimate trading going on. It's a huge subculture and it's something people do for fun. It's like a hobby, it's like a side thing. And yeah, this patch does really hurt that, which is, a, it's a bad thing. I admit that right out here, but there's some benefits that could come from this as well to both the community and especially to Valve, which is why I think that they're doing this. I think the seven day ban is so that they can better track skins. So follow me on this one. Little Timmy gets scammed. Oh, I lost my karambit. Valve, I want my karambit back. Oh, uh, the karambit's gone, man. It's gone through 50 bots. Uh, some guy bought it for 40 bucks. Now he's got it. What, Valve's gonna go to that guy and say, hey, this belongs to Timmy. You gotta give it back. He didn't do anything wrong. That doesn't seem very fair, does it? Uh, if there's a seven day ban, Valve has a week to get that item back to Timmy. I, I honestly think that's a really good thing for uh, stopping scamming from happening. Uh, unfortunate side effects, but that's a good thing that could happen. Also, they explicitly state here that the purpose is to kill the bots. So how these gambling sites and skin trading sites and all those things function is they have a lot of, of bots that automatically trade with players. And then those get all shuffled and, and thrown everywhere. And then of course, laundered into real money. Of course, that's how people get skins out of the system as well, is from these bots. Now the bots have the items for seven days. The only way that these companies can now function, or I guess not companies, but organizations, I don't even know if they're, they're probably not incorporated, these organizations can function is if they have a huge inventory, like a back inventory of skins just sitting there waiting for the trade ban to expire. What is that? That leaves them right... Right for the taking, man. Valve, I'm gonna give you some advice. Ban the bots. Do it. Do it. If you have these inventories sitting there with skins that they can't trade, and then Valve comes in and bans them, I mean, you've just taken out these sites. You have, you have pretty much taken full control over your own market, Valve. So, goodness. Also, and here's my little justification. I'm gonna try to give you a justification for this. If you kill all of those skins, You've taken out a lot of supply. This game's been going on for a long time. There's a huge supply of skins out there. If you kill the supply, the price is gonna go up. Look, I didn't say that. <clears throat> and can we do cheating next? Can we kill cheating next? Thank you folks very much for watching. I am the War Owl and I still have no closer. Like the cockroach, they are resilient and agile, and will survive. They'll be back.